Hey guys, welcome back to Team Foxer. In this episode, we're out on rabbit control. We also have some bonus fox footage too. Okay guys, hopefully you can hear me okay. Tonight I'm going to go rabbit shooting. Before I do that I'm using my air rifle and my 22 ella I always like to make sure that my rifles are on song so I tend to put a few rounds down. Plus one of the paddocks tonight is a little bit further than usual so I'm going to pace these uh, targets out at various different stages and see how we get on. Having already been to the area I'll be shooting before and already paced it out, I set the targets out at roughly the distances that I've seen most of the rabbits so far so I know that I'm hitting them uh, ethically. Also I use these Birchwood Casey targets which are roughly the same size as a rabbit's head so I know that if I'm hitting those I'm doing the quarry the best service by making sure it's a humane swift dispatch. So first up is the 22 lr I think we're going to have to rethink these targets. Okay, so the targets didn't work out as I planned. However, they did leave some pretty decent dents in there so I could see exactly where it was I was shooting. So I finished up there and swiftly head over to the permission to start. Uh, I got one as soon as I arrived with the air rifle and then what I did was, uh, as I walked through the paddock, spot one into the uh, rear of that paddock which was a good 60 odd yards off which was exactly where I would pretty much place that last shot. And there you go, one runs right past me. Didn't see that one, but I did get that one. Although it was slightly obscured by the post, you couldn't see that one on camera. The air arms air rifle is so quiet with that Viarc silencer on and there you can see me using the breakaway coaster to zoom out. At around 24 stroke 25 foot pounds the FAC rated 510 is pretty clinically accurate at around 50 yards or so. That was the last rabbit for that evening. Right, let's do some foxing. Finishing with the rabbits fairly early, I thought I'd check over on the pheasant shoot, and it was a damn good job I did. Driving through the fields, not really expecting to see anything, I was quite surprised to see this lad at 60 yards, a fairly easy shot. I was then even more surprised to turn around and see another set of eyes in the field behind me. The trouble is, it was full of crop so it was quite difficult to see the fox. As the fox disappears into the sugar beet, I'm hoping it's going to make its way around the outside of the field. So I position myself on the farm track, hoping that that's where it's going to come out. And there it is, thank God for that. Trouble is now though, it turns and goes back through the field, meaning all of this brush on my left is just too thick to shoot through. So I take a couple of steps to the right to be able to get a good sight picture in between a gap somewhere. I just don't need it too close. And there she is as she lays in the field, a very fat vixen. Who knows, could have been mother and son. Either way, it's a good pair to get out of the way. 
A couple of nights later, we're out in Norfolk, and I love this place, it's full of wildlife. Having not been over here for a few months, I was kind of expecting to see something. Sure enough, I'd only been there two minutes, and there were two foxes, as well as a fistful of rabbits in this field. After a moment or two's hesitation, this fox finally comes bounding across to the best fox called Mouthcall. A quick zoom out and zoom back in again to check range Feeling confident that it's now well within range, I decide that any point from here on is good for the shot. Now I've slowed the replay of this shot down to show you that because I'm shooting off sticks, uh, and I needed to make sure I was on a steady platform, I actually move to the left and pull the gun to the right and take the shot as my crosshair hits the sweet spot. As soon as I'd taken the shot, I lamped the rest of the field to see fox number two still stood at the edge of the field. So I kept calling and fox number two came in a tree also. Having not cycled the bolt from the first shot, this fox actually heard the cycle, though I kept calling and it kept coming. Oi. Believe it or not, this fox had an exit hole the size of a rugby ball on the other side. Uh, it's quite amazing how he managed to flap around so much. And that rounded off another successful trip for Team Foxer. Thanks ever so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also check out a link in the description below for a chance to win in our latest competition.